Okay, well, I'll do one real quick video that is kind of an extension on assembly. This is going to be on disassembly. So it's kind of reverse of everything we did in chapter four. So let's go ahead and take a look real quick. Okay, so it's still in the hack computer. So we're still doing the hack assembly language. But what we have done so far in the course with hack assembly is essentially assembling it into binary code. So we're doing symbolic language, so at 17 DJLE, and translating that to the 16-bit binary strings that get transmitted through the computer. Now, there's an actual part of the Nanda Tetris suite that does this. It's just the assembler. All it does is it takes in some source code here, and then it generates just the binary strings. So we take in symbolic code, assemble it, get binary data. What if we want to do that in reverse? So since we have a static assembler method, every single symbolic instruction gets translated to a very specific 16-bit string, we can easily reverse engineer that and derive a disassembler in any high-level programming language that we want, whether it be Python, C, C++, D, C Sharp, Java, etc. Just anything that we would want to because we know the actual static assembly method. Now, what we have here is this A instruction, you can tell because of the opcode, translated to at 17. We have a C instruction, opcode of 1, translated to DJLE. Now, one thing I will note is in a symbolic language, when we have variables and labels and stuff, so at loop, at end, at i, x, or something like that, we cannot disassemble to get those label names or variable names or anything like that. That is all lost in translation. We go for at i, and it translates to the binary form of whatever 16 is. Let's do what 16 is and things one zero 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 something like that i forget off the top of my head once we get to this we can't go back to at i that's lost what we get is at 16 because we know the decimal value so when we do reverse engineering you generally are not going to get exactly what was assembled but you'll get what the assembler had to begin with so the symbolic aspect is completely lost and this is true for reverse engineering at high level as well but that's a different story now first step to is to identify how we get our binary format this means you need to understand how the symbol generates that binary string to begin with and it's not too bad we've honestly already done that so each binary string is very specific to a symbolic hack instruction. There is no ambiguity whatsoever. We know that every bit in the resulting string is specific to some aspect of an instruction type. Generally, and this is particularly true for C instructions, but for A instruction, we know that we have two types, and that's A and the C instruction. Both of them have one bit that is very important. A instruction and C instruction, that first opcode bit, MSB, is critically important because it is what determines if we are doing an A instruction or a C instruction. So we look at the opcode and say, hey, if it is zero, I'm doing A instruction. If it is C, I'm doing the C instruction, and we can branch off and go from there. So A instructions, if we determine the opcode is zero, all we have to do is take the remaining 15 bits, translate that to decimal, and we're good. We already know that. So, easy to do with A instruction. Again, if it's zero, or the remaining 15 bits to decimal. But once we do that, we append an at sign to that value. So, if we had six from those 15 bits, we'd have at six. If we had a 248, have at 248 so you just get the actual bits translate the decimal prepend an at sign and that's it not too bad the instructions not as simple 
So just on the symbolic syntax, we have dust equals comp semicolon jump. This format, very, very important. Binary syntax, opcode one, unused bits, always one, a bit, six C bits, three D bits, three J bits. Seen this many times already. And it's very, very important if you want to derive a disassembler is to understand this format very particular and understand how to recreate it or kind of translate it back to the original. So, since the C instruction is far more involved, it will require using several lookup tables for our various bit clusters. So we have the comp bits, which are the A and C bits, desk bits are the D bits, and jump bits are the J bits. Then we use a data structure like a Python dictionary or C++ map, something like this, which are basically associative arrays to create these. Now, when we use those associative arrays, we just need to know that, hey, if I read in the bits 101010 when I'm looking at the C bits, I should end up with zero. Right, so we read in the six bit C string, associate that with the appropriate symbolic instruction. Again, if I did 001100, I should get D for destination. I should technically get D equals if I want to actually be appropriate with this. Let's just do D equals and some of that. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, not test. I'm an agent, let's get D. My bad. So if I do 101010, computation bits, actual part of the string is zero. 001100 should be zero. Oh, sorry, D. Whereas if I do zero five ones, I get D plus one. But now we can combine the A and M instructions and select which one we want to use based on our A bit. So that means if I were to get, let's do the easy one, one one four zeros, I would get A. I would probably split that with a comma. AM. Now, we know that we can split this into different strings. So now we have a M and I got an array. And if my A bit is zero, I use index zero. So the first one here, the zeroth one here. And then if it's one, I use M. You can easily choose between the two. And that would work for a plus one comma m plus one d plus a comma d plus m i just use the a bit as the index for those strings All right whereas for destination bit this is very easy if we don't have one we are just gonna get null so again let's say i had a computation of d plus one right well i'm doing destination right now so let me let me do D instead, just regular D for computation. We'll see why in just one moment. So if I'm doing N001, I read in these bits for my destination bits. What I should do is prepend it with M equals, so I'll get M equals D. And if I were to get say 011, I do D M equals. However, I get all zeros, do nothing, including the equal sign. I would end up with something more like this. That'd be how you do those six bits. Again, just a simple associative array. Honestly, it's simpler than computation bits because there's no A or M to choose from. It's just reading the bits, generate the string. Pretty much it. Jump bits, exactly the same. And if I'm just doing D real quick, I do 001, I do semicolon, JGT, terrible. And if I did 110, semicolon JLE, if I have nothing, then I don't write anything. Put in a semicolon. It has something like N equals D. Now, when we look at this, when we're reverse engineering this, you might end up with something like, uh, ADM equals D plus one semicolon JNE or something like that. This would be perfectly valid 
if you're actually trying to see what you can assemble and disassemble, this is valid instruction. It's a completely useless instruction for the most part, but it would be a completely valid instruction. Again, generally you have something like this or something like this. Biodegress. Also, you know what this is supposed to be? Jump bits, my bad. And then once we have all the bits accounted for, we just need to format that instruction. Recall that only the computation bits are required. That's why I was continuously writing the computation bits in because they're always supposed to be there. And then the only variation you have are if you're using destination bits or jump bits or a combination of the two. And then we should have dest equals, this is one part, comp, another part, and then semicolon jump. Now you notice that I actually combine destination string with the equal sign and jump string with the semicolon. That way, if I'm not doing jump, I don't end up with that extra semicolon. And if I'm not doing a destination, I don't end up with that equal sign. I get exactly what I want. The only thing that is standalone is the computation part because it always has to be there. So, then we have the overall just very useful overview to see everything in the entire scope of the hack assembly. So whenever you're doing a disassembler, if you want a better look at the entire social arrays for your dictionaries or maps or whatever you have it it's just very good information and i think it's one of the most helpful slides in the entire course so that's pretty much for disassembly it's very honestly not hard it's mostly just a lot of logical processing trying to determine the actual paths looking at the opcode doing translation of 15 bits to decimal and then doing a lot of string prepending and whatnot and mostly a lot of ordering so over the course it's not too bad i think the c bits whenever you start trying to slice the string so you have the a bit and the computation bit so the destination bit jump bits splitting all those up appropriately can be a little bit tedious on one language to another and then understanding whatever data structure you're using whether it be dictionaries maps hash tables, whatever it might be. That can be a little bit daunting. There's a good bit of moving parts in it, but generally the logic is pretty simple. At least I don't think it's too bad. Maybe I'm just biased though, because I've done it so many times, but I think it's a generally pretty fun project to derive a disassembler for the hack assembly language because of how honestly straightforward to a fault the hack assembly language itself is. So, that's it for me for right now. Hope you learned something. I'll see you next video.